Chapter 36 Alexis and Caden were already gone when I woke the next morning. I knew they were planning on an early start home, but had thought they would wake me before they left. We loaded our luggage into the back of the car and headed out of Yuma. It was a long drive and we knew it would take most of the day, especially with the trailer. We were almost out of town when Devin took a call from Ethan. Gavin and I listened in as if we had a choice in the car and discovered that Garza and Anderson had left town. They hadn't disappeared like Jessup, but in the last 24 hours, they'd both found reasons to pack up and leave. It didn't look like they were planning to return. Shit. That was all three of Annie's killers. We stopped for lunch in Tucson, eating quickly, and then got back on the road. As the highway started weaving through Texas Canyon, my stomach started bothering me. I started to feel nauseous, almost like morning sickness, but the timing was wrong and something was off. Devin had just pulled off the interstate and turned on to Highway 191 when I knew I was going to be sick. Pull over, I said, desperate. He eased the vehicle onto the shoulder in time for me to throw the door open and lose the contents of my stomach onto the ground. I vomited until there was nothing left and my stomach still convulsed. When the retching stopped, I pulled the door closed and collapsed back into my seat. Are you all right? Devin asked. I shook my head, I feel like hammered shit. What else is wrong? My stomach hurts. I felt a hand touch my face and opened my eyes to see Gavin's arm reaching between the seats. She's burning up, man. Devin pulled the car forward a few feet then put it in park. You drive, he told Gavin, before opening his door and coming around to mine. He helped me out of the truck and into the back seat. Do you want us to take you to the hospital? He asked. Wilcox is only about 15 minutes away. I lay down in the seat, my head in his lap. No. I just want to go home. Are you sure? I'm sure. Home. I felt the car start moving again as Gavin pulled back onto the highway and headed home. We barely pulled into the yard when I jumped out of the truck and ran for the house. I'm calling Alexis, Devin called as I raced for the bathroom. Alexis was sitting on the foot of my bed waiting for me when I came out of the bathroom. Come over here and let me take a look at you, she said. I sat on the bed. I couldn't resist pulling my legs up beside me and lying down. I was too exhausted to sit up or even keep my eyes open. She got down on one knee beside the bed, and I knew she was using her healing talent to see if she could figure out why I was so sick. After a moment, I heard movement and opened my eyes to see her standing. It's food poisoning. Where did you eat? Some Mexican food restaurant in Tucson. It was packed and sounded so good, I replied. Guess that was a mistake. Did you have the same thing she did, she asked. No, we both had the beef enchiladas, she had chicken tacos. Devin replied. Then you may be fine. I've done what I can. She's in for a rough couple of days, though. Wait a few hours before giving her anything, then, hopefully, she'll keep it down. If she starts to get dehydrated, call me and we'll start an IV. All right. Their voices were fading as though they were leaving the room. They were farther away, but I could still hear them clearly. I assume you haven't heard from anyone in town since you got back, she said. No, I heard from Ethan as we left Yuma, but nothing since. She got sick this side of Wilcox, but wouldn't let us take her to the hospital. I called you as soon as we got in. Well, then I have some good news and some bad news for you both, have a seat. I'll tell you and you can decide how much to tell her. Okay. Brandon's in custody. I don't have all the details. You can get those from your team. And the bad news, he asked. I'm sure Nikki doesn't know it yet, but the babies died. I didn't hear Devin's response. The wave of hurt and sorrow that washed into me through our connection made me cry out. The feelings were suddenly gone as Devin slammed down his shields, keeping me from feeling his emotions. 
I tried to push myself off the bed to go to him, but I was too weak. I couldn't even sit upright. I laid on the bed, fighting the sickness in my body while my heart tore in two and tears streamed down my face. Shit. Devin's voice came from the living room. What? Alexis asked. She knows. She felt it through our bond. I've closed my shields. You can't do that. Alexis sounded alarmed. You close your shields and you're not feeding her energy. She's sick, the only thing that has her still able to walk and talk is the energy you've been feeding her. Shit. He said again. What now? There's nothing more I can do. Go lay down with her, talk to her. Don't forget to open your shields enough that you can share energy with her. She needs it. I heard the door open as Devin walked her out. A few minutes later, the door closed and he came into the bedroom. He crawled across the bed and curled against my back. I'm sorry, baby. I rolled over and buried my face against his chest. Tears continued to roll down my face, but I didn't have the strength for more. He wrapped his arms around me and pulled me close. The wall he'd put between us vanished and I could once again feel his sorrow, but it wasn't as shocking this time. It seemed to blend with my own. I lay still in his arms for a while, letting the warmth of his arms and his scent surrounding me comfort me. It hurts. I said against his chest. I know, he said, pulling me closer. Don't miss the next book in the series, Live.